This is the synthesis of strontium iodate lab. Let's see if I can help you through the lab, through this dry lab. Uh, available to you is a PowerPoint that has all the data you would have collected in the lab. Uh, again, there's a student template you can follow as well. <clears throat> the student template, let's kind of start with this and we can go through an explanation of where you're going to get a bunch of these values. <clears throat> uh, template will look like this. It does ask for a molar mass of the strontium nitrate. Again, you can get that right off the lab. You can see I put a value in there. Also, for potassium iodate and I put a value in there. Again, the lab would have been reacting the strontium nitrate with the potassium iodate to form potassium nitrate, which is actually the liquid material, not interested in that, but also strontium iodate, which is a solid material. This solid material you would have masked out in the lab and figured out how much of this you would have made based on the amount of these that you started with. So <clears throat> let's take a look at, again, what the lab instructions have you do. <clears throat> First part, it has you calculate the amount of strontium nitrate and potassium iodate you're going to need to make a 0.1 molar solution. Uh, that's what these values are for. That's the mass that you're going to need to, to, to uh, weigh out. <clears throat> kind of slipping onto another calculation, I did go through an example. Again, using the factor label method, determine the amount of strontium nitrate needed to make 100 milliliters of an about 0.1 molar solution of strontium nitrate. Since I want to start with the 0.1 molar or moles per liter, times it by the 100 milliliters, convert it to liters, so the liters cancel. Using the molar mass, I now get the amount of strontium nitrate I would about have to mass out. So 2.12 would be the amount I would need to mass out. So 2.12 grams is the mass that you need. For potassium iodate, you're going to go through a very similar calculation with the exception of, oh, the molar mass. Instead of using this molar mass, which relates to strontium nitrate, you have to use the molar mass of potassium iodate. And again, molar mass of potassium iodate is right here. So again, that value is going to go there. The mass that's used, that's the mass that's used in the lab. So again, you need to look at the PowerPoint for the dry lab. And I believe for potassium iodate, uh, the PowerPoint slide shows 3 or 2.139 grams. And I believe for strontium nitrate, it is 2.06 three grams. Now, we have the number of grams of each one of those components we massed out. How do we go to moles? Well, again, you're going to have to use the molar mass, right? That's a gram per mole. So here's grams converting to moles. So again, we're going to take the grams and we're going to do a divide by for the molar mass to get the moles used. The volume well, we made a 100 milliliter amount, and that was a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. So once we know the moles and we know the volume, we can calculate the molarity. Again, molarity is in moles per liter. So we'll have to do a little conversion here from milliliters to liters. So moles divided by liters are going to give our moles per liter. So that's the top part, getting a standardized solution. You'll find in the lab, and I think with the, uh, with the PowerPoint, you're actually performing synthesis number two and synthesis number four. You should see some slides that have a mass of a watch glass plus a paper. That's with nothing on it.
and again you can record those masses there. Down below is after you've done the reaction you're going to have the mass of the watch glass, the paper, and that product, that strontium iodate product is going to be on there as well. So you're going to record the masses here. You'll see in the slides that there's another weighing. Again, what they're doing there is weighing things to constant weight, making sure all of the water that would have been in with this solid material, that it's totally dry. And I think you'll find after one weighing that it is at constant weight. And again, the instructions tell you what constant weight is. So I don't believe you're going to use these two, uh, these two slots. But you will get a mass here that's very, very similar, if not the same, as the mass here. And again, that check was just to make sure water was driven off. Okay, so how do we go here? Mass of the wash glass, paper, and the dried product. So basically, you're taking your mass that's here subtracting it from the mass of the weighing paper to get this particular mass. Oh, pardon me, that's not how you do that. This is, yeah, all you're doing is taking this mass, ugh, this mass, and putting it here. So you're determining which one of these is the smallest amount, and you're transferring that information there. So this is the data collection part, and then you choose your data to put it up here. Okay, here's your mass of the product, which is a subtraction of the two. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. So now we have the mass of a product, the volume of strontium nitrate used, volume of potassium iodate used. That is in a chart, and it tells you again what synthesis it is. So for strontium nitrate, synthesis 2, I believe you're using 20 milliliters. And for potassium iodate in synthesis number 2, I believe you're using 30 milliliters. Strontium nitrate for synthesis 4, I believe you're using 20. And for synthesis number 4, potassium iodate, I believe you're using 60 milliliters. This ends up being the confusing part. Okay, theoretical yield. How many grams should we have produced from strontium nitrate? Or strontium iodate, pardon me. How much strontium iodate should you have produced using strontium nitrate as your starting material? This is going to be the theoretical yield of strontium iodate produced, giving the starting point of potassium iodate. Whew. How are we going to do that? Well, it's going to be a really long factor label problem. So, if we're using potassium iodate as the starting material, here was your starting molarity. And again, I calculated that out. Sorry for the blurriness, but it's 0 0.09995 moles. That value, you should have calculated up in here. This molarity is your starting point for figuring out a theoretical yield. So we have this many moles per liter to start out. You can see I converted that to milliliters this time. In synthesis number two, you're using 30 milliliters. Again, we're looking at the balanced equation to go from potassium iodate to strontium iodate. It's a 2 to 1 mole ratio. So 2 moles of potassium iodate are going to be consumed to make 1 mole of strontium iodate. So that's where this comes into account. It takes into account this balanced equation. So again, we're starting with molarity, the volume that we used gets rid of the liters. I'm left with moles of potassium iodate, converting that to moles of strontium iodate. 
using the molar mass of strontium iodate, I can then calculate the number of grams of strontium iodate I should end up with given this much starting material. So if I flip over, potassium iodate is what we just went through. Right in there would be your theoretical yield starting with this much potassium iodate. That's how many grams of strontium iodate you actually produce. I should probably write that in there. This is the strontium iodate produced. <clears throat> Flip back over because I go through the exact same calculation except this time I'm using the strontium nitrate as the starting material. Here's your molarity of the strontium nitrate solution. Again, converting it to liters, converting back to milliliters, pardon me. I only use 20 milliliters of strontium nitrate. I have a one to one mole ratio. Strontium nitrate, strontium iodate, it's a one to one mole ratio. So you can see that's reflected right in here. And then again, the molar mass of strontium iodate to come up with the grams of strontium iodate that's going to be produced starting with 20 milliliters of strontium nitrate. Oh, so that information would go here. So again, I gave you an example to how to calculate this particular block an example calculation for this block. You would do the same thing for the synthesis number four using different volumes. Well, obviously the strontium nitrate is going to be the same, but we certainly change the amount of potassium iodate. <clears throat> so this is how much you should have gotten. This would be how much you actually produce. So your percent yield, and again, just look at page 94 of your lab manual. It will tell you what mathematical operation you have to do comparing this to this to get this. And again, which one of these two are you going to choose to use? Whichever value is smaller. The smaller one of these values is what is, what is known as the limiting reagent. So you can see the instruction. Make the font red for indicating the limiting reagent. So whichever one of these two values are smaller, that's the limiting reagent. That would be technically your theoretical yield. That would be the value that you're going to compare with this. Again, synthesis 4, you're going to work your way across, calculate this, and calculate that. <clears throat>